So again, it's it's a softer plastic cape, uh, but just not quite as nice. Uh, on the articulation, Hey, hey, friends of revolutionaries, October's over, so it's time to put away the Monster High stuff, for now, <laughs> and move on to something really cool I've had sitting on my shelf, waiting to get to, figure it was time, let's get a look at the DC Comics Unlimited Series, Mattel's retail figure series, we're going to kick things off with the DC Unlimited New 52 Superman. Yeah, I started with the Batman Unlimited series, and has now gone on to the DC Comics. And the Unlimited being their retail, uh, what is it, the uh, Signature series being their uh, online version. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that at some point we see some of those Signature figures make their way onto retail shelves. Probably won't happen, but it would be cool. But um, yeah, start like I said, starting under the Batman Unlimited line, they're using the same plastic bubble, same card, or at least same design. Maybe not the same one. It doesn't have Gotham in the back. It doesn't have the Batman logo at the top, but it's got the same design. It's got kind of the side panel with the portrait of the character. And the background here, kind of, uh, kind of universal now for uh, DC. It's got the, the yellow and the orange explosions in the back, which I kind of commented on the Marvel Legends, this yellow and orange explosion theme Definitely kind of becoming a thing between the two of them. They're, they're kind of using this this color scheme in the back. I don't know how I feel about it. You know, maybe a, maybe a, a black kind of a, a industrial kind of background. That would be cool. The yellow and the orange. Okay, yeah. It's it's pretty signature, if, I, if you can say that. Pretty iconic now for DC characters with Mattel. Just ready to move on. Something kind of different. The Signature Series is cool with what they do. I'd like to see them kind of change things up for their retail versions, but that's beside the point. That's all I'm going to say about that. It is the Superman, as we pointed out here. It's got the air holes on the side. On the back, it's got that nice larger portrait of Superman, which, despite being the new 52 costume, which I still don't like, <laughs> I haven't warmed up to it yet, for the face, for the for the 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 portrait they've done, that's actually not a bad picture of Superman. That's not a bad... That that actually is probably one of the better ones I've seen out of the comics. Now, whether or not the, uh, the figure is going to live up to the portrait's promise, we'll have to find out. But, I will say this, that's actually a pretty cool picture of Superman. It would be even better if it wasn't in the new 52 costume. And I'm going <laughs> to... Try not to rant about that too much. I've already done that enough under the uh, under the uh, DC Collectibles version. But um, yeah, the right up here, real name Clark Kent or Kyle L, of course. Occupation journalist, foreign correspondent, and hero. And by foreign correspondent, we're talking very foreign. <laughs> Location: Metropolis. Powers, abilities, and skills: strength, speed, and vulnerability. Flight, heat vision, X-ray vision, and freeze breath. I hope that's all they kept it to. <laughs> you know, with the reboot in the New 52, let's just hope they just kept it to those things. He's got plenty of others, apparently, but... Yeah, let's hope they just kind of scaled it back to just this again. Uh, his bio, it says, uh, Rocketed to Earth from the Doom planet Krypton, the infant Kal-El was adopted by the kindly Kent family of Smallville, Smallville, Kansas. Young Clark Kent grew strong and powerful under the rays of Earth's yellow sun. Developing a phenomenal array of superpowers in adulthood, Clark would use these abilities as Superman, championing the virtues of truth, justice, and the American way, while keeping his, secret, keeping his true identity as a crusading reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. 
I gotta say, I like that write up. I like that. It's different from ones we've had before. It's good. It's a good write up. I like it. Uh, from the Unlimited series, of course, the new 52 Flash and Hawkman have also been released. And we'll get a look at those as we go on. But before we get to them, let's go ahead and pop Superman out of the pack and have some fun. Be right back. All right, we've got Superman out of the pack. And always first, first and always, always first, good things. Uh, I am not a big fan of the new 52. At all. At all. <laughs> I have to, I'm, I will admit, after issue 12, after a year of trying it, I have not bought a single DC comic in a year. So... They may have changed since I last bought it, but after issue 12, I stopped. I was tapering off by issue 3. By issue 3 on some of the things, I was already tapering off, and I have stopped buying DC altogether because I'm not a fan of the new 52. Again, I'm, I'm always keeping my eye open. You know, for the new year, come January, I might try it again, but I'm not a fan of it. That being said, <laughs> with that being said, I got to say that between Mattel and DC Collectibles, I think Mattel actually did a better job in, in creating a New 52 look. Um, I'm not warming up to it. I'm not saying it's a good look. It's still a terrible look. But I think Mattel did more to improve it than DC has, than DC Collectibles has. Um, <laughs> they've uh, they made some gigantic misses. There are some huge misses on the figure. But for the most part, I think that the M Mattel definitely came in on top. Mattel definitely did the better job. Uh, starting first off with the face. And this is probably no, this is not news to anyone who either owns the figure or have seen any of the reviews on it so far. But when you look at his face, it's actually a fairly good sculpt on the face. The hair, the eyes. It's even got some of the blue highlights in there. It looks good. The problem comes when you take a look at that soft, that soft, round, baby chin. It is not a good Superman chin. It's not that square-jawed, you know hard Superman chin. It's very soft. It's very weak. It's just not a good look for Superman. On video, it actually doesn't look quite as bad. In person, it's really, really bad when you see that soft chin. And again, the rest of the face looks pretty good. I think that they could have done a much better kind of youthful Superman had they worked a little harder and gave it a little bit, you know, firmer, square jaw. I think, I think that right there is where a lot of people are making that Superboy comparison, and they're not wrong. It, it just does not look good. Otherwise, I mean, great sculpt. It looks really good. Had a lot of potential. That chin just just ruined the whole thing. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that small, very anemic kind of Superman shield. Some people may prefer the smaller shield. I've always liked Superman's shield to be very large. You know, very prominent on his chest. The smaller shield, it is a sculpted shield, so it's not just painted onto the, onto the torso, but it's actually sculpted on there, which is a nice touch. I really like it. But it's so small that it just seems, again, to reinforce that weaker, smaller, less Superman, and more of a super boy. You know, if it had been a bigger shield and a firmer chin, this would have been a great figure. And they could have done it. They really could have. Um... And by that I mean, when you look at the rest of the figure, when you look at re the rest of it, I mean, of course, you know, he's got the high collar for the new 52. That is one change on Superman I like. I do like the higher collar. I would have liked this, the cape to get tucked into his collar a little bit more here on the collarbone. 
would have been nice if it tucked in a little bit, a little bit more. But it's Mattel. You just take it how it comes. Uh, the panel lines on the torso. Another good thing, or one of the good things Mattel did, was that they under, they kind of, how should we say, uh, uh, lessened. It, it's it's very, it's not as prominent. You look, you can still see the shield panel on his shoulders, on his arms, on his abdomen. If you look, they're there. But they did not make them a very prominent feature. They did not just kind of kind of stick out at you. They weren't, they weren't in your face. It's very, uh, it's very, it's kind of an underscored kind of feature with the panel lines. That was smart. That was smart. Mattel did a much better uh, job at putting panel lines into the suit without making them so prominent and such a, such a major part of his look. The legs, the legs don't really have anything all that special to them. The boots, the boots are a fairly original sculpt, well, totally original sculpt with the ridges on the back and the kind of Wonder Woman-ish shin guards, sort of. So the boots are okay, no problems with the boots, whatever they want to do there. But the panel lines that they have put in, again, kind of a, kind of a very underscore, kind of a, a, a not real exaggerated feature. And it looks good. It does look good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the field of blue. Kind of from the from the neck down, this blue all the way through. But uh, Mattel did offset that by adding in, I think they even done an earlier version of the figure that just had kind of the solid blue. And they actually went through and added kind of this metallic type of sheen to the suit. Now, it's not across the entire body, like it's not on his head or cape, it's not on the boots, but it is on the blue, it's not on the shield, but it's on the blue part of the suit. It's not on the belt, but that glittery kind of metallic sheen really does a lot to kind of help make it pop more. It's not kind of that full, boring blue. You know, it actually looks like there's something more going on. And it really does help it a lot, a lot. Uh, there is the Superman, the new Superman belt coming to a point with his shield there as the buckle. It's got his pointed gloves, the cape, just a regular cape. I think the, I do think that the cape that they've used, even though it's a firmer plastic than on like the uh, previous Superman figures. I think that the, 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 the folds and the shape of it is pretty much the same. So much so that it even just comes across, just like cuts across the bottom. It doesn't have kind of that rounded cape like we see with the DC Collectibles version. It just cuts straight across, which makes me think this is a reuse of the cape. It still has the uh, black S they put on it for the new 52, but, um, but yeah, I think it's just a reuse on the cape. Um... For his articulation, the head does turn left and right. No up or down to speak of. The arms come up and out. Twist to the shoulder. Twist at the bicep. Please, please, please. <laughs> twist at the bicep. Elbow and wrist. There's a twist at the thigh. Crunch. Leg comes up. Out. Twist of the thigh, knee, and foot. So twist, out, down, knee, foot. Now one thing that, uh, that you may hear as I'm kind of showing you the, the joints, there's a lot of, a lot of groaning. <laughs> there's a lot of groaning and popping that you get when you first get super out of the pack and start to kind of break him in, so to speak. Um, you want to be careful. You want to be really careful because on his right leg, on that one leg, the uh, the thigh, the thigh joint, because you can see when he stands, he's kind of got this bizarro kind of turned in foot because this one twist on the thigh is just so tight <clears throat> that without heating it up, I'm afraid I'm going to break the knee or something else. 
And I don't know if that's because of the fact that he's got this this metallic sheen put on him, if it kind of froze up the uh, the thigh. But uh, but be careful because when you get him out of the pack, again, there's going to be a lot of groaning and popping as you're getting him open. But uh, as I was saying, uh, I I really think Mattel did a better job, not just in the uh, in the articulation, because that was the big thing I want to see what Mattel would do is uh, creating the articulation using the new 52 characters and the new two fi- the new the new 52 uh, costumes. So not just articulation wise, but in presentation, I think that uh, that Mattel definitely came out as the winner on these DC characters. With, uh, with the Flash, Hawkman, Wonder Woman, Batman, you know, with, with several other new 52s left to go, I'm hoping that, uh, that we get much better versions of them in their new 52 uh, uh, style and, uh, and nothing quite as, uh, as, uh, as far off as this, uh, come on, focus. Come on. I don't, want to po- I don't want to focus. Sums up on the camera. <laughs> Not as far off with that with that new fifty two uh, with this with this kind of super boyish chin. I think it, I think it's the weakest point of the figure. Otherwise, it, it's it it does a lot to improve um, the uh, the shortcomings that I see in the in in the design on the characters makes them much bigger figures to have. But that's just me. <laughs> Hope everybody enjoyed watching. Uh, stick around. Got the rest, or got more of the DC Unlimited uh, left to go. Rate, comment, subscribe. Join the revolution. We'll see you soon.